Hey guys, BTEC here. Lossless Scaling has just dropped a new update that introduces dynamic frame rate stabilization. This means your frame rate will stay stable even if your base FPS fluctuates. In this video, I'll show you exactly how it works. Right now, this feature is in beta, but by the time you're watching, it might be available in the stable version. Before we dive in, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. I'm really close to hitting 4,000 subscribers, and my goal is to reach 10K this year. Your support would mean a lot. To access this feature, you'll need the beta version. Here's how to get it. 1. Open Steam Library and find Lossless Scaling. 2. Click the gear icon on the right and select Properties. 3. Go to the Betas tab and choose Beta Beta under Beta Participation. This ensures you get the latest updates first. Once updated, launch the application. At first glance, it might look the same, but there's a key difference. You'll notice the Mode section now has two options. Fixed Mode. Adaptive Mode. This update allows you to dynamically generate frames to match your monitor's refresh rate. Previously, you had to manually cap your FPS at a certain value before enabling frame generation to keep it steady. But now, you don't have to worry about that. Just select your frame rate and hit Scale. Lossless scaling will handle the rest. All right, let's see how this works in action. I've launched Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 on our store, running at medium settings, and my frame rate is fluctuating between 50 to 70 FPS. With the previous method, you had to pick a frame multiplication factor like 2x, 3x, 4x, or more. Here, I'll demonstrate 2x frame generation. I hit scale, and now my base FPS has dropped by about 10 FPS to generate additional frames. Instead of my original mid-50s FPS, I'm now getting a smooth 80 FPS experience. Unfortunately, YouTube only supports 60 FPS, so you won't see the full effect, but trust me, it feels way smoother. Note, you might experience a slight input lag. If you want better performance, you can reduce the flow scale value. This improves FPS by lowering the input resolution for the generated frames. While there might be a slight drop in quality on my 15.6 inch laptop screen, I can't notice any difference. Now let's try adaptive mode. Select adaptive mode in lossless scaling. Two. Set your target FPS. I have a 120 hertz display, so I'll enter a 120s and hit scale. Now, my base FPS has slightly dropped compared to 2x FG, but only by 1 FPS. The game feels incredibly smooth, even when my base FPS dips into the mid 30s at times. If you're using a controller, this is a great option. Want even higher FPS? Simply increase the target value. I'll set it to 144 FPS. But as you can see, my total FPS isn't exceeding 120 FPS. That's because V-Sync is enabled. To push beyond that, disable V-Sync in lossless scaling. Now, I'm hitting 144 FPS, but it doesn't feel as smooth since it's surpassing my monitor's refresh rate, and there's noticeable screen tearing. So I recommend keeping VSync enabled. Now, let's test this in a different game, Beam and Drive on the grid map. My base FPS is 90 to 100 FPS. Previously, I'd have to cap my base FPS to 60 to get a 120 FPS output, but this introduced 60 FPS input lag. Now, with adaptive mode, I just select my target FPS, hit scale, and boom, I'm getting over a 20 FPS with smoother gameplay.
Now, let's test it on a more demanding map, Jungle Rock Island. Here, my base FPS is 40 to 50 FPS, and my GPU usage isn't maxed out, meaning I have a CPU bottleneck. This is the perfect scenario to enable frame generation FG, as we have GPU headroom. After enabling adaptive FG mode, I'm getting a stable 120 FPS, while my GPU is still not maxed out. This is an excellent way to make use of extra GPU power when the CPU is the bottleneck. So, we've seen how this works in games, but what about movies and YouTube videos? Movies are usually shot at 24 FPS, which can feel choppy. Previously, you had to manually multiply 24 FPS to match your monitor's refresh rate. Now with adaptive mode, just enter your target FPS and voila, you get 120 FPS movies. The experience is incredibly smooth. If you're into anime or movie upscaling, check out my other video for a deeper dive. Now, one of the most useful scenarios I've found for adaptive mode is watching YouTube videos. Creators upload videos at different frame rates, 60, 30, 25, 24 FPS, which previously meant you had to adjust multipliers manually for every video. Now, just enable adaptive mode, set your target, and enjoy any video at your desired frame rate. So, that's it for this video. If you found this useful, please consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. See you in the next one.